Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. We are joined here by Jansen Smith. He is, uh, or he has, uh, enrolled in the Amazon course about five months ago. In his first 30 days, did over £10,000 in sales with his first Amazon FBA product. So, without further ado, let's get into the video right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is ask you to just kind of give a brief introduction about yourself, if that's okay. Uh, hi guys, so yeah, my name's Jansen. Um, I registered for Johnny's course back in May. Um, the reason being that I previously sold stuff online, so I used to sell uh, things on eBay when I was at university. Um, but the trouble with that is I had to actually go and queue a lot in post office queues and things like that. So when I start, when I discovered Johnny, I think in around January, um, Amazon FBA really appealed because I saw it was a bit of a passive income stream, it's all automatic and I thought, you know, I really enjoyed the eBay side of things, selling things, uh, creating a brand and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's just basically what attracted me to, to Johnny's videos and then the more I learned, learned about it, the more attracted I was to it. Um, bought the course in May, started my research uh, and then launched the product end of August um, and then within the first month it absolutely blew me away, sold out. Uh, it was an absolutely amazing feeling, and now I'm um, now I'm addicted to it. <laughs> it's that addiction of updating the uh, the app. Um, right, yeah, so that's that's precious. that's basically what we're going to go through today is um, kind of how you got to that point, um, your perception of what it would be like beforehand, because I know you had some experience, but what your your perception would be in terms of the issues that you face, um, which many people will probably go be going through those same thought processes right now. And then just a little bit of kind of planting the seed as to how you went about um, doing what you did, right? So yeah. if you have any questions for Jensen, I want you to just leave them down in the comments um, and I'm sure you'll hang around, you'll answer them and stuff like that. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, just start at the very top, right? Okay, the very top. Yeah. So you said that because of your kind of history with, with eBay and stuff like that, that got you interested in the FBA side of things, the passive nature of it. Um, Let's have a little think about, you know, what what was the main things that maybe held you back? Was there anything that held you back or anything that you thought would be an issue? Now, this is why you've got to try and think back <laughs> to yeah. back then. Was there anything you're like, oh, you know, this is going to be hard because? I, th I think the biggest obstacle in my head was this whole private label thing. So... You know, when you go to a shop like Donnell Mill or whatever and you see um, sort of like a hot household item and it's got a brand on it that you've never heard of, mm -hmm. you don't actually realise that that could just be someone like you and me that has basically sent a message to somebody on Alibaba and basically said, can you stick this brand mm -hmm. on this product? For me, I always thought, you know, the company did absolutely everything. So I thought they actually created an idea, built the TV themselves, got their brand, stuck it on it. I, didn't, I wasn't really up to speed with what private labeling is mm -hmm. like all the hard work's pretty much already done the product's already created it's literally just sticking the brand on it so i think it was not knowing that that kind of held me back the that's, most. A, that's a really really big thing that most people will not understand um that pretty much everything that you see bar some stuff like the dyson is private labeled um, yeah, it's yeah. it's ridiculous. And like you know, a couple of my friends have seen my products and said, "Oh, how, how did you get the box made and mm -hmm. the instructions?" And I was just like, "It's literally all taken care for you. All you need to do is send your design to the manufacturer, and they do everything for you. Like it, it's it's so straightforward. And I wish I'd known about it years ago yeah. because I, I could have been you know one of these Amazon sellers that sells loads of different private brand products. Like you know that that for me was a bit of an eye opener mm -hmm. to to be able to see that it's not that difficult and you know now when i go to the shops and see products that have a brand that i've never heard of i just think that's not a big deal like i could probably do that you know if, yeah. if i really wanted to that's such a big epiphany to have when you realize that everything around you is just sold by people that are yeah. just like you it's not like a this massive massive hurdle you've got to overcome it's like yeah, oh you just yeah. you just it's email not like suppliers <laughs> where you need millions to spend on <laughs> r&d and marketing yeah. you know you can really do it with not that much uh, that much of um startup capital what a good segue okay what a great segue um can we ask uh, a little bit about when you started um did you have a budget in mind and did you go under it or over it so how did you approach that um yeah i mean in terms of a budget in my mind not really because i'm in full-time employment and i've managed to, to save up a bit of money um i mean ideally i didn't want to spend thousands and thousands because there still was something in my mind that you know 
this could fail, it's a bit of a risk. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to take that risk because I thought, you know, it's the people in life that take risks that kind of, that, that do well, yeah. um, do well uh, within business. So I um, didn't have a figure in my head exactly, but I kind of thought I didn't want to spend more than one or two thousand mm -hmm. pounds. Um, then I found my product and, you know, it was cheap and I saw the amount of money that I could earn. And then I think when I started to add up all the, the, the um, facts about how much I could earn, that's when in my mind I was a bit more like, okay, I want to do this properly. I want to actually spend a bit of money on getting a proper logo. I want to spend a bit of money mm -hmm. on getting a nice box made and, you know, ensuring that this product's actually really decent. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was researching the product, there was two or three suppliers that had a similar version to what I wanted to sell. It wasn't quite the same, but it, it was really, really cheap. I think they, they were messaging me and they were like, it's only $2 a unit, whereas the other product that I'd seen that was a, looked a bit higher quality, I think it was like $4. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, I can save a bit of money here. I can go for the cheaper one. But then when I actually thought long term, I want to create a brand where people actually look mm -hmm. at my products and they're like, this is high quality, this is the best. Mm -hmm. That's when I thought spend the extra money spend and I'm so glad I did, you know, because yes. like with, with my product, I got, I got the box made. Mm -hmm. It cost me 70 pounds to get the design done. Mm -hmm. And pressing that buy button on five when I did it, I was thinking <laughs> 70 quid for a design, you know, is it really going to make that much of a difference? Um, and it really has, like, you know, I get comments on it from customers saying it's a nice gift box and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely the costs are higher than I anticipated, but I'd say my sales, the high amount of sales that I've had, is reflective of the fact that I invested a bit more. That's so, so, so important. I just want to briefly pick up on that point and explain to people why it's so important, is that I, I'm sure you will see and have heard of, and I've definitely seen this, people try and go with the cheapest option possible, but then struggle to to get sales or struggle to get yeah, reviews, yeah, because, yeah. Or, get, or they get lots of bad reviews. Um, and the key thing here is, just put yourself in the customer's position. If you have two products in front of you to buy, one of them looks sick, like and it's got a wicked box, yeah. and has great reviews, and the other one is cheaper, yes, but has bad reviews, doesn't look as high quality, the pictures aren't as good, the logo maybe doesn't look as nice, which one are you gonna buy, right? Yeah, exactly. If it was me yeah. personally, some people might be different, I'd pay more for something that looks better. Yeah, and it's brand. not going to be a great deal more expensive, right? It's going to be one or two pounds. The, the customer's not bothered about that. Yeah. Um, and as you know, like reviews on Amazon are so important. Like if you get one bad, you know, one star within your first 10 orders, so and that review star rating comes down, mm -hmm. then, you know, that's, that's over. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult to recover from that. So that's why I thought it's just not worth it. I don't want to spend, you know, maybe like 20% less mm -hmm. uh, and get a more inferior product and then risk getting bad reviews. Yeah. So you, um, men you so mentioned yeah, really, really important. you mentioned like spending money on Fiverr. You're like seventy pounds on a box design, um, and it's quite interesting. I had my box. I've got some boxes. I've just showed you showing them earlier. So I had those done for fifty dollars, and I, I took them to a UK designer, and they said that would be uh, over a thousand pounds for a, a yeah. box design. Um, the box design is everything, right? Do you now um, regret spending that money? Definitely not. I've had, <laughs> honestly, I've had so many comments. Like, I got a couple of friends to buy the box, uh, to buy the product, and they saw the box, and they were like, have you made this? This is this actually looks really professional, like like a proper company. And that's when I explained to them about this FBA thing. I'm like, it's it's not that difficult to come, you know, make a product that looks so professional that you'd see it in a shop and you'd think a huge corporation's made that, when really, you know, it's a 29-year-old a in his bedroom just tapping away on a, on a laptop. Exactly. So, um... <laughs> Yeah, definitely not. And in addition to that, I've had, you know, reviews and things that that made a point and said, I really like the box. Like I, I actually put in the description, it comes in a gift box. Mm -hmm. It's just a box with nice package, nice design nice. on it. Yeah. Um, but as well, I kind of thought if you make the box look nice, then it also means that a customer might be more likely to buy it because they want to gift it to somebody as a Christmas present yeah. as a, or like a birthday present or something, as opposed to like, a polystyrene bag you know it kind of it, it, it's about perception right absolutely so, yeah absolutely i agree yeah. with that and this i think i've talked about this on my channel i don't know where i've talk, talked about this when i used to work at apple um then i i i, I think is they they have a unboxing team right and they're yeah. a team of people this may be complete rubbish i just heard it when i was there they have an unboxing team that just unbox the products and they design some of the packaging and stuff like that so that they understand the feeling of opening the package and getting the package delivered from the customer's perspective and try and make it as enjoyable as possible. So when yeah. you make your packaging, when I make my packaging, hopefully when anyone else makes their packaging, you've got to think about what is it going to be like when the customer receives it 
from Amazon in the little Amazon box, are they going to be excited to open it and they're going to look around the packaging yeah. and they're going to read it, or are they just going to throw it away and just rip it open because they don't really care? Now, obviously, you want them to look at it because that's when you could have like another call to action for reviews. You can like show them all this other stuff, support like articles in terms of like email addresses. Um, so that's a good, that's a really good good thing, good little lesson learned um, that anyone can really, if you're going to start doing this, please, please, please put time and effort into your. I guess I would say your customer journey. Right, every time yeah. your, the customer interacts with the product, how would they feel um, doing that? Um, let's move on though. Let's move on. Um, let's talk about kind of how you how you found your product. Maybe how you found it, and I guess how long did it take? Uh, let's go with those those two first. Yeah. So I was reluctant to get Jungle Scout the um, the web uh, web app. Uh, main reason being that when you go on YouTube and you type in Jungle Scout, there's thousands of tutorial videos, and I just thought. Pretty much everyone doing FBA is probably going to be looking at those videos, mm -hmm. searching for the same criteria. Everyone's going to be getting shown the same product. So, so a product might look attractive now, but if you've got 50 people that have seen it at the same time in you know six weeks' time when they launch Amazon, it's going to be way too competitive. Mm -hmm. So I took a bit of an unconventional route and kind of tried to be a bit, bit creative. So I went on Alibaba typed in, you know, like Amazon hot selling items, <laughs> things like that, that I thought suppliers might put, you know, in the title really, if it was yeah. selling well in the US, for example. Mm -hmm. Found a couple of products that were okay. And then the real, the game changer for me um, that I hadn't seen anybody else talk about was I sent a message to every supplier and I said, can you tell me what your best selling product is and do you have a sales catalog? Mm -hmm. All of them came back to me, told me exactly what product sold well and gave me a catalog full like you know the over 50 products in, a, in one pdf and then from there it was just a case of going on amazon when i've got the pdf next to me typing in the product and then looking at the stats and that's exactly how i found my yeah. products i've confided in a couple of people what the product is um that also do amazon fba and that have used jungle scout and they said that's, they've never even knew that product existed. It never came up on the Jungle Scout search. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd say for people that might be getting a bit frustrated searching because um, they're not finding anything, it's too competitive. I say you, you just need to kind of think a bit outside the box, use those methods to, to be able to find something. Yeah, I think that's, 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 so, that's so important. I think Jungle Scout for me is it's a, it's a means of giving you ideas just as much yeah. as something else is, right? Yeah. So when I first started, I remember going around shops and just looking at every single product. And I hate shopping, so I'd be yeah. like, "This is very um, like weird for me." I'd be looking at every single product, thinking, "Okay, what's that? Take a note of it." You know, I'd be going on Alibaba, looking at these things. I'd be buying stuff. Well, can I sell this? Because um, all you want is you want ideas, right? So I guess what yeah, you do exactly. is you went to the suppliers and say, "I want ideas," and they gave you ideas. Some of them will be bad. Some of them will be good. Some will be better in other markets. Yeah, uh, and you yeah. found something that met your criteria, with kind of your budget, and um, something that you could do, something you feel that could be successful. Um, yeah, exactly. And it kind of it's a bit like word association or product association. So you'll discover products that you never even knew existed, mm -hmm. which will then lead you onto other products that you didn't know existed, and then you know, and then one of those might be a really great opportunity to launch into. Exactly. And before you know, you're selling something that you could never have predicted and you know i've told my friends what i sell and they're like what on earth is that i would you know i just wouldn't put you and that together and, you know it's a bit embarrassing but i'm just like it's it's making me money yeah who, so. who cares yeah and it's giving you a little foot in the door as well so that you can then look at other products maybe that you that maybe yeah. you find more interesting or whatever um but definitely it's giving you that foot in the door so um when you had kind of all the numbers and stuff like that you kind of knew roughly how many people were selling a day or per month um, was there anything you were unsure about in terms of like competition or anything like that? Um, yes, yeah, so I think when I was searching, so I started the search in June and I think I found the product first week of July, so it didn't ta take that long. Um, my All my competitors, none of them were UK based, they, like you can see where they're based when you click on the name, they're all like Chinese sellers and I thought, my first concern was that these are the Chinese manufacturers, they're going to be able to undercut me massively. Um, and I was looking at the stats and I think they were doing around 30 a day mm -hmm. uh, and they all have reviews over 100. I think there's about five of them. Um, but when I looked at their listing, I kind of saw spelling mistakes, the photos weren't great. You know, I didn't have that much confidence. If, if I were to be looking for this product and I was um, saw that listing, I wouldn't have a great amount of confidence. I might think the spelling mistakes in this, what kind of company does that? Mm -hmm. So. 
that kind of put those fears at ease because I thought, okay, I've got one in here, I've got a product and I can definitely improve. I can make the listing awesome. I can give it a great box. You know, I, that, that's right. basically what, what got me over that barrier. What I love about what you've said there and what you did is, um, I talk about this all the time and it's about finding an opportunity, right? Yeah. Finding an opportunity to be different than your competitors. So sometimes it doesn't matter if everyone has loads of reviews because when you look at the listings, like you said, spelling mistakes, like the pictures are rubbish, um, yeah. and and ultimately <clears throat> they probably don't even have all their pictures on there. Like some might yeah. have two yeah. pictures, they might have seven, they might have nine, who knows? Um, but you found an opportunity, and your opportunity was, I guess, being a, I guess, a UK, um, you know, home-owned seller. UK based. Yeah, and I made that a really big point on my listing. You know, I said UK-based company, uh, customer care is our number one priority, mm -hmm. satisfaction guaranteed, money back guaranteed, all that, and I think that's really helped. Mm -hmm. um, but just on the point there that you raised about the opportunity, I know you've said before, like, the perfect product doesn't exist. This is by no means the perfect product. Like, if I was just searching on Jungle Scout, I would have seen, I would have been put off by the fact that reviews were too high. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's another barrier that you need to get over when you're searching for a product. Mm -hmm. You're never going to find something that ticks all the boxes. True. You need to find something that ticks three out of five boxes or whatever, mm -hmm. and that you're convinced that you know you can improve upon and do better than the competition. Yeah, that's great advice. Really great advice. Yeah, don't be afraid to, like you said, look outside the box and just think critically about how can you improve on your competition. How can you stand out? How can you be different? And how can you steal some of their sales? A bit, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So let's look about, let's kind of fast forward to, uh, you've had all your products delivered to Amazon. Um, probably quite worrying at that moment, maybe nervous. Yeah, I was very, very worried. Okay, cool. So how did you kind of approach your launch? Did you just use PPC? Did you do giveaways? Did you, what did you do? Yeah, so I watched all your videos on the launch strategy repeatedly, uh, and then I decided that I didn't want to do a giveaway. Mm -hmm. The reason being that I thought it's kind of fake sales, so you're giving a product away to somebody pretty much for free, mm -hmm. and yeah, fair enough, you might climb, climb to the first page, but if they it, well, after the giveaway, what do you do if sales just stop? You're not going to know what the reason for that is. Is it your price? Is it your listing? Mm -hmm. Because all the giveaway is showing you is that someone will take your product for free. It yep. doesn't actually tell you anything. And on so <laughs> I decided firstly to get um, some reviews from friends and family. Yes. Um, which how, is just probably quickly, bit, how, like roughly how many did you get? Like three, five, like what? Ten? Yeah, five. I got five. But yep. I, I mean, I asked for five. I think I actually properly launched when I had two. Okay. Um, but I asked five. And, you know, I, I felt a bit of a dick constantly messaging, like, hi, can you leave me a review? And they're just like, what, what's so important about reviews? Like, <laughs> you know, to some people, reviews don't matter. But to, as Amazon FBA is, reviews are absolutely those, king. Those so. initial ones, especially for what I know what, how you did launch, but especially for getting those conversions from people viewing your advert or your page to buying it, yeah. they look at your reviews. If you've got no reviews, yeah, if you've got one review, days. you need, you need reviews, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I think after two or three days, I had two reviews, and then that's when I was like, right, you know, squeaky bum time, need to launch a PPC and actually see if there's a demand for this product. Mm -hmm. And I launched the PPC, refreshing, refreshing, couldn't see my listing, and I was like, that's it, business is over, I failed. <laughs> um, and then I went out, and then I think I checked my Amazon seller central and I was expecting just to see one sale from a mate or whatever and he said three and I was like what I said maybe one of my friends has bought a product twice or something like that so I logged in saw it wasn't my friends and I was just like this is good this is good feeling it's good yeah. feeling um, and then yeah it just, it just escalated from there I mean I, I think I started with 20 quid PPC mm -hmm. A day and my strategy to launch was to have a lower price point mm -hmm. because I wanted to get that sales velocity so enough sales per day to be able to get me to the front page that was my main uh, priority um, but yeah and then day after day after that the sales was just growing and I started to increase my PPC budget just because I saw that I was getting loads and loads of sales and it was running out very quickly mm -hmm. uh, I mean to me I, the main thing I was concerned about was getting getting those sales mm -hmm. and you know as, as, as you saw I went to Ibiza after a week <laughs> and it just got out of hand I just could not I Absolute couldn't believe carnage. it <laughs> yeah I was just I was just like what is going on yeah was that because that was your first week wasn't it I think you had a few days where you did a few units a day and then it kind of spiked up didn't it yeah, so the first week, so the first day I did eight, mm -hmm. and I, I, I said to my girlfriend, we were out, and I was like, you know, the new Mark Zuckerberg here, donate <laughs> sales, baller. I was, I was so happy with eight, mm -hmm. 
And then the next day I did 20 and I was like, what? So, but then that's like set the standard in my head. Mm -hmm. So I was like, right, I need 20 every day. Mm -hmm. And that was a Sunday, I think. So I thought, right, Monday's not going to be as good. People are at work, they're not going to be buying. Mm -hmm. Next day I did 22 and I was like, okay, strange. (laughs) So then the remainder of that week I was doing in the 20s. I was, and then I was, you know, absolutely buzzing. And then Friday it went to 30 and I was just like, something something's happened here maybe i'll start to rank i'm not quite sure went to ibiza and then on the sunday no on the monday so just after uh, just a week after mm-hmm. i got 62 sales nice and <laughs> I, I got bestseller in my category amazon's choice all in the space of the week it's just it's just ridiculous because you don't realize how quickly things can escalate mm-hmm. and i i think after the week it ended. I only had like ten or so, ten or fifteen reviews, mm-hmm. not many. Yeah. Um, and you know, I knocked the number one off who had like a hundred reviews. Who was this huge seller? And that, I think that goes to show that when people saw your listing and your product compared to the others, they were buying yours instead. Yeah, and exactly. That, that, they they yeah. saw something they liked, whether it was you know the listing, the fact that I did a gift box, the fact that I made it a massive point that I'm UK based and customer is my number one priority. Mm-hmm. If you're unhappy, so am I. You know, or the email sequence, I don't know, but I think everything combined, it all uh, kind of resonated well with the customer. They liked what they saw. And yeah, I, I sold out of um, one of the variations after two weeks. I mean, I ordered, so I ordered a thousand units in July, mm-hmm. and I thought I'd be happy if I've pretty much sold out by January, February. You know, like six weeks later, I've pretty much sold out of one of the variations and I'm thinking, oh God, I need to order more. I'm going to run out. Yeah. Um, and then I ordered, I ordered another 3000, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm expecting to sell out of that by Christmas. So it just, you don't realize how big Amazon is and how many people use it and are buying things. It, until you actually see it, do it for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't, you just that's, don't realize how I think many that's people the thing, I, the thing I find people like yourself that start selling on Amazon, they start making money. They're like, I had no I you know, I I thought it was a good business model, but I had no idea yeah, yeah, yeah. actually what it's like and what it's like to make twenty sales a day. Twenty sales a day is, is wicked. Thirty sales a day is with sixty yeah, yeah. is yeah. is incredible. And to get that without actually doing much, I know you'll be doing some admin and stuff like that, but to make that much money Without really oh, yeah. doing much, I mean, is weird. yeah, that, that's what well, that's a good, good point uh, to raise actually about the, the amount of work. So I spent a lot of time on it prior to, to launching. So making my brand, doing the box art, you know, kind of toing and froing on Fiverr, mm-hmm. writing instructions manual, finding the product. So the hard work comes up front, mm-hmm. and I was showing my girlfriend's family, you know, what I was doing, and they were like, "You're always doing this," blah blah blah. <laughs> but since I've launched, honestly, it's. I'd say I wouldn't count checking the app as working because that's just my addiction. I just want to see it. Yeah. Um, it's very little. I probably do like an hour if that. I mean, it's the, the main work, I suppose, is reordering and things like that. But in terms of dealing with the customer, it's it's minimal. And, and you can do it on your phone. You can do on your phone as well anyway when you're doing anything. Yeah. Obviously, you can just reply to them. Um, yeah, exactly. And yeah. you have all your email sequence set up and you have that all automated. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I've got all that done, so it's it's all taken care of. You know, you get the odd customer that might email you directly with a question, or if you get um, a review that's not a five star, then that's when I take the time to email the customer and be like, "Is there anything I can do to help?" You know, if you're unhappy, I'm unhappy. So again, kind of showing the customer I really care about them. Um, and one thing I was really uh, proud of myself is I got a one star review, and I made it my absolute you know, mission to find this customer who they were. Mm-hmm. I managed to find them, emailed them, basically, you know, apologizing and um, again, showing them that I really cared that they were happy. Managed to resolve the issue and they changed it to a five star. Perfect. So that, it's little stuff like that that takes a bit of time, but to me it's worth it. It's, it's definitely worth it. And, you know, I've, um, you know, done things where, you, you know, you send gift vouchers to people or, you know, yeah. you send them a letter, like a card. Like if you can find their order number, because sometimes it can be quite tricky, which I, that does yeah, take time. Yeah. Uh, and obviously they have no idea how long that takes, um, especially if you get a lot of orders. You know, finding that purchase and then trying to message that customer. And then if you can do something special for them, then it's worth doing it. Even if it takes you a day, two days to get rid of that one star review and turn it into a five star review. Like even just yeah. to get rid of the one star is fantastic. Um, but to make it into a five star, that's, you know, that's even better. Uh, and that yeah. just, that, will help so much and I think anyone that 
is watching this and they just started selling on Amazon, they are selling on Amazon, they get a bad review, don't just accept it as, oh, well, that's there now. It's, yeah, you know, it, it, it can, yeah, be, it can be changed. You need to try, yeah. Exactly. You just put yourself in the customer's um, position. What if this company reached out to you and like really did a heartfelt apology or try and fix it for you? or they sent you a card or whatever it may be, you're going to feel yeah. really bad that you left a one-star review. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, like, I mean, that's what people don't realize. Like, if you buy, like, a laptop and you're not happy with it and you leave a one-star, you're never going to get a message from Apple or Microsoft yeah. being like, hi there, really, really sorry. So I think doing that helps you set yourself apart and makes the customer remember you. And, you know, possibly if you're launching other products further down the line, come back, recommend you to friends. So, yeah, it's all, it's all really important. And it exactly. doesn't take that much time. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. Now, so let's um, let's talk about the. So you're you're now a member, and I don't, I don't actually talk to anyone about this, uh, and I, I don't really. Maybe I've talked to you a little bit about it. So um, I'm launching something called the 10K Club, right? Um, and you are now a member of this, so you're making your first 10,000 on Amazon, and I'll be getting you a nice little award. Um, but in terms of you know 10,000 in 30 days, um, what do you think? you could do within 2019 do you have a do you have a thought process of what you think you can get to i've got a little roadmap in my head i mean initially i was thinking a couple of friends have said to me you're going to launch another product the the main thing i want to do which you know, is what you've said to me is yeah. scale it why would you go and launch another product when you've got a gold one now that you've not taken full advantage of. Mm -hmm. So for 2019, I mean, I'm hoping Christmas is going to be good to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm thinking of launching like in Europe. So I've got um, got a friend that's German. I've got a friend that's French. I'm going to ask them to kind of help me translate my listing. And, you know, again, uh, just really kind of help differentiate myself. Because mm -hmm. I've looked at the sales for my product in Germany and they're even bigger than, mm -hmm. than in the UK. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely going to consider that. I suppose further down the line could do America, but I kind of want to conquer this area first. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I, I did 10K in my first month, but the first two weeks of that, I sold out of the most popular variation. Okay. Since yeah. then, the sales has kind of dropped because the, the color is not as popular. So I'm fully, I, I wouldn't be disappointed, but I'm hoping, say, uh, November, I could probably do 20K. Yeah. So, you know, that... By that standard, I'm hoping that next year, you know, it's just ridiculous, like a quarter of a million, which is, which is ridiculous. It's, it's mad that you can go from zero to a quarter of a million pound turnover business, essentially within 12 months. Um, yeah, it's, I would never have predicted it. And as I said, you know, I, when I was looking at the sales figures, I was thinking, I saw the top seller was doing like 30 units a day and I thought, um, I'd be happy with 10, 10 units mm -hmm. a day, something like that, maybe five. And, and and now to have, you know, just two months later to now be saying to you, yeah, next year I want to launch, I want to be doing, you know, 60 units a day across Europe and, and things like that. It's just, it's just crazy. Exactly. But that just shows the power of, like, the, I, I honestly think this is one of the best business models in the world. Like, yes, you need yeah. a bit of money to start it, and that's, I guess, the barrier to entry. But you don't have to find the customer. The customers are there ready for you. Yes. You don't yeah, have to yeah. touch the products. Like you say, you don't have to do what you did with eBay and physically ship the products and you don't have to deal with you know any of the heavy lifting at all you just kind of sit yeah. there do an hour a day which is very very little even if you're doing four hours a day it would yeah. still be very and there's very so little. many levers that you can pull to grow it so you know there's facebook ads instagram ads yeah. you're launching in europe you know you just need that one product and then literally you know the, the world is yours and you, exactly. you, you can just grow it into something ridiculously big and, and that that's incredible so what what I think would be is really exciting is to see where you're at now and you know where it's going to be in a year's time, two years time, five years time, because the earlier you start, imagine if you waited a year to start. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you would you would be in a completely different situation. Uh, you know, next year you could be doing you know a quarter of a million. You could be doing more. You could be doing less. Who knows? But the the key is you just have to get started. And I think do what yeah, do what you've exactly. done and just, and just take action. Think outside the box. Think about how you can impact um, new customers, how you can take other people's sales, basically just steal other people's business yeah. um, and do it in a good way. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that was the, my biggest recommendation. You've just got to take action. Um, for me, I thought if it fails, at least I took action. At least I gave it my all. I tried my hardest. There's, mm -hmm. there's nothing more I could have done. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm so glad I did. You know, it's been a massive learning journey. And even if this product had failed, I learned, I've learned so much from it yeah. um, that I would be able to research and find another product and then hopefully make that succeed. You've just got to give it your best, you know, give it a go. Exactly. Um, and then I'm confident that pretty much anyone can do this. It's, you know, it's not rocket science. It's, it's and not. there's that statistic, isn't there, about Amazon saying, the number of people that sell on Amazon that are millionaires and the percentage is like, it's over 75%. I think it's, it's just, it's, it, it's ridiculous. So it's, it's yeah. such an untapped huge market. Um, you're selling in the UK, just proving again that the UK is an incredible market to launch in. Uh, when yeah. a lot of people say, Oh, you've got to launch in the US. You don't. The UK is a fantastic market. And when you think about the growth potential in the UK, what you're doing now is only going to grow. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which is, which is sometimes it's scary, scary, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great uh, thing. Yeah. So, um, what we're going to do, we're going to round up in a, in, a, in a few minutes, but I want to ask um, for someone that's watching this and they haven't, they're kind of looking at getting started, right? They're thinking about um, an online business, they're thinking about Amazon specifically. What would maybe be your advice given that, you know, six months ago you were in the same position? I'd say uh, you need to be determined and you need to persevere. Don't cut corners. This is a real business. It's not a get it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's um, a get rich, you know, over a, a bit of time scheme. It's a real business, and I think a lot of people don't really understand that. So, um, you know, on the Facebook group, for example, people are saying, you know, it's been two weeks. I'm not getting any sales. I'm not profitable. And I'm like, how many businesses out there are profitable in their first two weeks? You've got Snapchat. How old is that? It's like 10 years old. It's never made profit yet. <laughs> I, th I think people don't really get that. So you've yeah. just got to think, treat this like a real business, like a real brand. Um, and yeah, be determined. I've had a couple of setbacks. So when I first listed, my product went into hazmat review, which basically means that Amazon blocks your listing until they've reviewed the fact that it's not a hazard that's going to blow up the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And that sent me back like two months. And throughout that period, I was just like, my competition's growing, they're getting bigger. I've probably lost the opportunity now. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm so glad that I stuck with it. You know, I just thought, to be honest, stumbling blocks like this are kind of good because mm -hmm. it, it puts other people off. Me, I'm determined, I'm going to, you know, keep that focus. So this has probably helped because other people might have gone into Hazmat Review and they thought, nah, I'm, I'm done with Amazon, quit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got to treat stumbling blocks like that as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that would be my, my take home. That's, that's really powerful. I think what you said, especially about, you know, it is a real business and it, and it is. Um, most businesses will not make a profit in the first year at all. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of just a common perception of how business runs and yeah, to, yeah. to to make money in your first year is an, in, an incredible achievement um for a new business owner for you know an entrepreneur um so yeah congrats for doing it <laughs> and it'll be interesting to see how how next year goes for you you know once we get all your stock coming in once you can maybe keep on top of your stock levels uh, yeah. to see maybe how you know one consistent month of full selling full stock actually gets you that'd be really interesting to see uh, how far you can take that because if you've taken a lot of the sales already there's no reason why you're not just going to continue to dominate that particular niche because yeah exactly you need, know, you need to grow you? you know bringing new customers to amazon that exactly. would never have thought by advertising on facebook like yeah it, the opportunities are endless really exactly. so so um yeah. what we do we're, yeah like i said we're gonna round up in a few seconds thank you so much for spending time with us today on saturday you know i know this is uh, your day yeah. off you could be doing other things you could be updating your app continuously um, yeah I'll but, be, I'll be. Um, a lot just, of what we've just just to finish off johnny i just want to say as well just a massive thank you to you you know like one of the key things i say about you i'm not being paid or anything to say this <laughs> is that the support that you get from johnny is just like second to none like I'm, i message this guy not every day but most weeks on facebook you know private message and he always takes the time to reply he always replies um, I was having an issue when I was launching about um, my product picture. I was saying all my competitors were doing like rendering, and he gave me the idea of you know advertising myself on Upwork to be able to get somebody. Um, you've been like a real help to me to be able to actually to do you. this. Um, so I say yes to the people that are you know umming and ahhing about doing the course. Yes, you can learn to do Amazon yourself, but you're not going to have that mentor or that guide to be able to take you through the journey and to answer those questions when 
you really in that you know that hour of need of help so <laughs> you, you could spend two weeks doing no it's, no thank you for that i really appreciate that uh, it's humbled me quite yeah i like that thank you <laughs> don't know what to say no and and that's something i really um i really try and, and do as much as i possibly can is I, I know when i started which is the whole reason as to why i have like this youtube channel why i have my course is because i needed to ask those questions and quite often i didn't have like someone directly i could get an answer from that's in depth and um, so that's kind of always one of the big things that i want to continue to do which yeah. takes time and it gets very tough at times but it's it's a uh, most rewarding for times like that when i can see people like yourself you know, make a success of it um and also try and help other people do the same thing so a lot of yeah. the things that we've spoke about today um in particular the things like the sourcing the product, the actual launching of it with the PPC, the kind of reviews, you know, how we've been able to get you know, so many reviews so quickly. Um, a lot of this stuff you actually have started um, covering on your own YouTube channel, which I will yeah. link down below. It's Jansen Smith. It's nice and easy to find. I'll, I'll just link it down below. Um, but you've got some really good information down there. Um, some things that like, for example, one little thing which I think people should go look at is your review sequence of something quite kind of quite funny and quite interesting that you add into your sequence to uh, again give that that kind of like fun nature of business um, yeah i'm not going to say what it is here but i'll get people to go and, and go and have a look at that just like nice little additions like that that i think will really help people um trying to launch their, their business like get get information from lots of different sources um don't get information from like 100 different sources because you'll get like information overload but pick a few yeah. people that you can learn from um but yeah go in a um, sub to his channel give him some love let him know in the comments that you came from the channel um and just yeah see what see what you can learn from him as well yeah anything else any other thing you want to go over i think, I, I think that yeah could be everything yeah <laughs> happy with that awesome okay cool if you do have any questions directly um just leave them down below if there's anything we haven't covered if you want to do another interview you want me to go over some things in a bit more detail again let us down uh know in the comments make sure of course you are subscribed with the notification turned on. I'm not sure if you can see this, the t-shirt, I think it's reversed, which is pretty annoying. This says you're only one product away. And that's true, right? Yeah, exactly. Just the, just, just, so we, just the one. What do we need? One product. This, this is, I, I don't even want to end the video right now. I'm going to have a little rant about this because I see a lot of people that will say, oh, we, we covered this earlier. You know, people always talking about, oh, you got to launch a load of products. Yeah, you got to launch everything. I think you're on the same wavelength with me is focus on one. Like focus on Name one. one. Yeah, and exactly. Nail. Just nail one. And if that one you doesn't said, work, this, get rid of it and start another one. <laughs> yeah, you said this before to me about Apple. How many products do Apple have? They got five. <laughs> they literally exactly. have five products, yeah. and That's you know it. they're the biggest company in the world. And it's it's only because they can put a huge amount of focus into a small amount of things. Um, I find this like if I start trying to do too many things at once, something falls down. You can only spin so many plates until one falls off. Uh, yeah. And the thing that we can do as new sellers that gives us an, as, us an advantage over other sellers that have you know, a huge product list is that we can focus on that one product, whereas they are focusing on maybe 10 products or 20 products or 50 products. Uh, and yeah, honestly, yeah. you're always going to win. So uh, we'll round it up there. Thank you, every, every, yeah, thank you, everyone, for watching the video. If you got to the end, thank you very much. Make you sure you smash the like button on that, sub to all the channels, uh, leave any questions, comments down below, and uh, I guess we'll see you all very soon. Thank you ever so much for joining me again, and we'll see everyone. Uh, yeah, we'll just give it a wave, I guess. <laughs> Bye, everyone.